for the weird lighting again, but this week we're going to talk about the brother in this brother-sister book. So, yes, we are talking about Carter Kane. Last time we talked about Sadie Kane. Now we're going to talk about Carter Kane. Pretty much the exact opposite of Sadie. Pretty much. They do have some similarities. So. Very little, but some. So. Okay. Carter. Carter Kane. So, like I said, really, they're both incredibly brave, and that's about the only similarity I can think of. They're both incredibly, incredibly brave and canes. And hosting gods. So, other than that, there's not that much similar between them. Because Carter, first meet Carter, and you find out that he is a homeschooled kid. Okay? He goes around the world with his dad, who is this famous archaeological person. I don't really know what it's called, but he can translate hieroglyphics really well due to the fact that he's a magician. So, kind of cheating, but hey, he can still read hieroglyphics really well. And he goes around the world with him, his dad teaches him stuff, and he is very obedient, very, follows the rules a lot, which I'm actually surprised that he doesn't get along with Anubis better. Mm, but then again, he is hosting Horus, so yeah. But anyway, he can take the lead sometimes. Sadie more takes the lead, but he does step up a few times, especially towards the end in this one. If you can see, this is the Serpent Shadow. He really, really steps it up there and, like, is like, I am taking the lead. I hosted Horus. I'm gonna rally the Egyptian gods to come fight this giant snake. That's pretty much what he does. And, hey, it works. So, that was awesome. And, other than that, it's like, the first two books, he was more of a background person. Like, he didn't really want to make that many friends, and that's because he spent his whole life jumping from city to city to city to city. He didn't really stay in one place. And he had to always follow the rules, so it's kind of a little different for him not following the rules and going with what he wants to do. Just a little different for him when you think about it. And, like, that's, that's Carter. That's how he's different from Sadie. Sadie is more outgoing, and then you have Carter, who is a little different in that sense. Now, don't get me wrong. Carter has his amazing parts, okay? When we had a Carter scene, you could always count on him. You could always count on him to explain all this Egyptian stuff to us, which is really important because me personally, I did not know many of the Egyptian myths before I read this book. Like, yeah, you know the Egyptian gods, but the myths that go along with them, it's like the Greek myths where you know the Greek gods, but you don't exactly know every myth about them. For me, I knew very little about these Egyptian gods, and some of them were actually completely new to me, okay? Even, like, the one I recognized the best was Anubis, and that was just because every time you talk about Egypt in school, you're going to talk about their death rituals, I mean, come on. But I knew Anubis, Osiris, and Ra, and that was kind of about it. Uh, everything else was like, what? I... I don't really get it, but thank you to thanks to Carter. We know what is going on here. We also can count on him to make a plan. Okay, Sadie would wing it most of the time, but we can count on Carter to find a plan, to have a plan, to make the plan, and to execute the plan. He gets like the ball rolling and keeps it rolling. So that is the awesome part of him, and plus he's also really smart. So he's the smart one in this whole thing. Okay, he like, obviously knows a lot about Egypt because he was with his dad for so long. He knows, like, everything there needs to be known about Egypt and probably more. So, this, all this magic stuff kind of comes a little easier to him. Hieroglyphics, not so much, but he's still a little afraid to try things and to break the rules. Now, by this book, by this book, he's like, let's move. We got a giant snake to kill. Let's go. And... That's just what I love about him. 
Now, his relationship with Z Zaya, okay, by far, probably the most complicated relationship I have ever read. And that that's saying something, because he fell in love with Zaya, but Zaya wasn't Zaya. It was like some, I think it was like Shabbat or something like that but a fake Zaya who acted like Zaya, and then he found Zaya, and Zaya remembered nothing that this Shabbat, I'm going to call it, remembers, but he still in love with her, and then she gets possessed by Ra, and that's just creepy in general, and then he still likes her, and then she finally likes him back, and oh, that is way too complicated. The only one that ha could probably have a more complicated relationship is Sadie with Walt Anubis. Because you're dating two guys at once. How much more- they have complicated love lives, okay? And, like, probably the most complicated love lives ever in a YA fiction book, okay? I'm trying to think here, like, let's see, Rangers are probably not that much complication there, even with, like, Daughter of Smoke and Bone, like, that was complicated, because she, like, died and came back, but no, this takes the prize. These two kids have the most complicated love lives, and Carter probably wins it all, because, oh, wow, his love life. But in the end, everything's happy, and he has, like, this amazing girl that every guy is, like, and then I was also like, wait, you're with him? Yeah. So, that's pretty awesome. Let's applaud Sadie for making him dance with Lucy. That was so cute. And it's probably also another thing to add to the list of things I really want to see happen. And that is Carter finding out Lucy is a demigod. <sighs> so many things I want to happen. The crossover. You want me to mention the crossover real fast? between Percy and Carter. Again, Carter, really smart, but also kind of like Percy in the way where he's just, it takes him a second because Percy calls him a half-blood and he doesn't put two and two together. You know, talking about grief, half-bloods, demigods, put it together. Oh well. So, that is Carter for you, okay? Car that's Carter, really. It, in a nutshell, he, that is Carter. And there's so many parts with him, I could name a lot of parts where he is smart, planning, because like I said, he's the guy. If you need a plan, you go to him. You go to him, he will figure out a plan, he will do the research, he will get the ball rolling, he will keep the ball rolling, and Sadie will keep him in line and keep everyone else in line. They're really a great team, even though they're pretty much complete opposites. It's very strange, but it's also pretty interesting to see to like read this happening as you get both their takes on dif the different parts of the book. So that's Carter for you and now for your Egyptian word of the week. So last week I gave you Nada, which is protect. So this week is going to be the opposite. Strike. Howie! Literally. H-A-W-I. And for those of you who like hieroglyphics, there is the hieroglyphics right there. Howie, strike. There's your next little spell, and it is a Rick Riordan book. So let's look at the Rick Riordan tweet of the day, because it is past October 7th, and he's tweeting again. So let's take a look at the Rick Riordan tweet of the day. Actually, you'll get, and you'll get two, by the way, because I didn't do one for Sadie. How could I not do one for Sadie? So let's take a look. So first tweet from, for this one's for last week. If you all can think back to the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge, if you remember, I did do that at the end of one of my episodes, and somebody very awesomely challenged Rick Riordan. He did it. If you want to see it, there's a video on his Twitter page, and I'll post a link to his Twitter page in the description, but somebody asked, what are your views on the ALS Bucket Challenge? He responded, my view is that it was cold. Err. Rick Riordan for ya. The video is really funny. You should go watch it. And then the other t Rick Riordan tweet for this week, today, right now, is... And our other tweet. Let's get into the Blood of Olympus a little bit. We all know that there's going to be an Asgard series coming out after this. Somebody asked him... Why do you have to make us wait another year? 
His response. Oh, the usual pesky details like writing the book. Okay, that does take some time. So uh, I'm guessing he kind of came up with the title first and then is writing the story ba around the title or he either either that or he has an idea or an outline. I don't know how he writes these books. I really don't, but we're going to get the Asgard series next. Yeah, Asgard. This is going to be fun. But that is Carter Kane for you with our Rick Riordan Tweets of the Day. How we remember is Strike. And next week, it's Halloween. We got to do this. We're going to be talking about, the first. for the first time, I'm going to be talking about a god. Yes, I'm going to be talking about a god character that Rick Riordan has taken from mythology and placed into a modern setting. And that god is Anubis. Because like I said, it's Halloween next week. Talking about the Egyptian god of death sounds pretty, sounds like a pretty good Halloween related topic. So... I'll see you all next week. The Twitter link will be in the description below. Thanks for watching. Bye!